I was saying, uh, uh, I am grateful to God uh, that this is the day that he has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Um, the faithfulness of God, we thank God for all that which uh, he is doing uh, through these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these services or this conference or, or these 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, again, thank you so much, uh, my brother, my friend, my colleague, uh, Pastor uh, Newton, together with your lovely wife for availing this opportunity uh, so that uh, I can share the, the word of God. Um, as I said yesterday, I don't take it for granted. I don't take it as just another happening. I know you are a man of uh, great connections and uh, <clears throat> I mean, just to uh, prayerfully uh, decide that uh, I must, I should be one of the people who are speaking uh, in this 21 day of prayer and fasting is, is a great honor and a privilege. And I'm forever grateful to God for such an opportunity. And I'm also grateful to you, man of God, uh, my brother, uh, Pastor Newton. Uh, yesterday, we we stopped somewhere. I wish we, we have uh, the luxury of time. I wish we had all the time and we have all the time, but uh, there are other matters and other things that we have to attend to in life. And uh, that's the reason we have to, to end the meeting somewhere, even when we feel that we, we should continue. I mean, we, we, we just get to a point where we, we have, to, we have to, to close and we have to come to, to an end. And yesterday, I, I really dwelt on one thing. Uh, I've reached to a point and I was telling people here in church that um, I, I don't just want to be preaching. I don't just want to be teaching. I want to preach. I want to teach. I want to say things that will remain in the hearts and in the spirits of the people for a long time. Because unless what we are preaching and teaching is uh, actually being registered and being sealed, not only in the mind, but in the spirit of men, then we may not be doing much. And uh, that's why yesterday I, I seem to have just uh, dwelled on one issue, and that was separation. But today I want to, to go a little bit farther or deeper and, uh, and just address uh, other other things um, as, uh, as we still fall, follow and uh, as, we, as we still continue on our, on our theme scripture. And uh, I think I did some, uh, some, some, some uh, yesterday I tried to, to explain where we are coming from. And I know that uh, those uh, who went ahead of me, um, they also tried to capture and to, to say a number of things about the scripture. And, uh, but I'm still stuck on the word on two words, and that is, and in all matters of wisdom, in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them. I mean, everything that touches or that was touching wisdom and understanding when they were examined, when these three young men, when, when these, uh, uh, these four um, uh, Hebrew boys, when uh, they were examined on matters that were touching wisdom and understanding, the Bible says that they were found 10 times better than all the magicians. I mean, anything that could have uh, that could have been uh, uh, thought of, that could have been talked of, anything that was known in Babylon to be wisdom and to be understanding. After, the, after these uh, four Hebrew boys, after they were examined, uh, I mean, they were far ahead. They were 10 times better. And how I pray that the saints of our day, when we are examined, when we, we, are, when we are examined in those offices, when we are examined in the places where we are doing doing uh, 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 many other things of life that people will say, indeed, these men and women are 10 times better. We cannot compare them with the people we have interacted with, with, uh, with before. We cannot compare them with the people whom we have talked before. And I want to, to talk about a few things today. And uh, I'm addressing what yesterday I talked about, uh, about separation. Because for us to attain, for us to get to, to this kind of knowledge and the, to this kind of, of understanding, then 
There must be, there must be a separation. There must be a coming out. There must be a place where we stand. And uh, uh, today I want to talk about dealing with defilement, dealing with defilements, shaking the things that may defile us so that we may not attain the things that the Lord wants us to attain. There, when defilement is in life, in somebody's life, when there is defilement in a life of a man of God, when there is defilement in a life of a woman of God, when there is defilement in a life of a child of God, then defilement brings limitations. All defilements are used to limit to limit people. you find that somebody is limited in his uh, intaking of the word of God, is limited in prayer, is limited in everything that is, that, is, that is spiritual. And this is why you find many times, many times the enemy wants to, to bring defilements, defilements in, in the lives of men so that he may limit them. And this is the reason why this is the reason why, and I am grateful to God that Daniel was able to detect it. Da Daniel was able to, to know that it is more than food. It was something, it was more than food. Daniel understood it is not just food. And that is why uh, he said he was able to say no to the food that was offered. Why? Because it was an every point. The enemy wanted to infect. The enemy wanted to, to defile this young man. And he knew as long as this young man are defiled, then he asked them. Let's, let's read a scripture in the book of Micah, in the book of Micah, in the book of Micah. Uh, Pastor Lucy, you should be helping me with some of these um, pronunciations. But uh, I, I know that the... Uh, you, you're getting, let's read the book of Micah, chapter 4, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse, um, verse 11. Micah, chapter 4, verse 11. The Bible says, now also many nations have gathered against you. Now many nations have gathered against you who say, let us be defied and let our high look upon Zion. Watch that. God is saying that there are many nations that then were surrounding Israel, were surrounding uh, 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 the, the, his, his people or his children. And what is their cry? The cry of these nations is one. They are saying, let us defile us. Who is this? Let us defile Zion. Let us defile Zion. Let us defile the place of God. Let us defile where God dwells, where God lives. And what, what is their reason? The Bible says, and let our high look upon Zion. Watch that. What does this mean? There is a demonic eye. There is a satanic eye that can never access us unless there is defilement in our lives. There is there are satanic, there are demonic, uh, uh, there are demonic satanic entities that wishes that we we be compromised, that we be that we be defiled. Why? So that they can access our marriages, our families, our careers, our lives. But as long as we say no to defilement, as long as you stand up on, your, on the word of God and say, I refuse to be defiled, I refuse to be compromised, I refuse, then the eye of the enemy, the eye of the evildoer, the eye of they that are against your life and the call of God upon your life. Listen to me. There is a demonic eye that is always focusing on churches, focusing on ministries, focusing on families, focusing on businesses. But let me tell you something. As long as there is no defilement in your life, there is no defilement in your marriage, there is no defilement in that church. You know what? That makes, that puts an edge. There is an edge around your family. You remember what the Bible says? That the angel 
of the Lord and comes around them that fear him. I want you to know that angel, the only exit, the exit of that angel is if there is defilement. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we will live sanctified lives. Sanctified lives. Lives that are pleasing unto God. Lives that are dedicated to God. Remember what Paul is telling Timothy. In a big house, in a large house, there are all manner of vessels. Some are of gold, others are of silver, others are of clay, there are others of wood. And Paul, by the Spirit of God, says, but the, 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 the vessel that sanctifies itself shall be fit for the master's use. I want us to understand, God is not only interested with golden vessels. God, God is not interested with uh, only uh, those expensive vessels. The interest of God is on a vessel that is sanctified. The interest of God is on a vessel that is clean. I have just seen one of our one of the of our sisters, you know, taking uh, some uh, I think it's uh, some water or something. Now, just 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 think this way. Can you imagine if you have you have clean water, but a dirty glass? If somebody asks you water, drinking water, and tells you this water is clean, but the glass is dirty, all you wish to take anything, it doesn't matter how pure it is, doesn't matter how clean it is, but the vessel is dirty. Many times we want, it is true, we want to, we, we know we are carrying something of God. We are carrying the God, the creator of the universe. But a time has come and that time is now to also check how are these vessels that are carrying the, 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 this power. Because it doesn't matter how great the power is. It doesn't matter how powerful the power we carry is. If the vessels are compromised, we will not witness the flow of that power. So there is need. There is need. There is need to, there is need to, to check on the vessel. There is need to, to sanctify, to live sanctified lives. Why? Because there are these nations who are surrounding us and they want us defiled. They want the church defiled. They want, you know, women defiled. And there are a lot of things that brings defilement in the lives of people. We are living in a world. Every side you turn, there is something to defile you. You just get, your, get hold of your, your cell phone. And there are enough things to defile you from that gadget. You switch on your television. There are enough things that are being cast to defile you. You walk in the streets. Defilement seems to be everywhere in our day. But you know what? We can still be the church. I have said we can still be the church. We can still live and walk in holiness. We can still live and walk in righteousness. Because you know what? The Bible says, as much as they do this, verse 12, but they do not know the thoughts of the Lord, nor do they understand the counsel. For I will gather them like sheaves to the threshing floor. Hallelujah, glory to God. They want us to be defiled, but we will not be defiled. We say no to defilement in the mighty name. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ, I say no to defilement. I will not release my mind for defilement. I will not release my eyes for defilement. My mouth, my tongue will not be defiled. My life will not be defiled. My heart will not be defiled. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, I bind the spirit of defilement. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your spirit is not going to be defiled. Your mind is not going to be defiled. I say no in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. All manner of defilement, your work, your career, 
when somebody comes and offers a, a bribe, I'm giving an example. Let's say I'm, somebody's doing business. Let's say somebody's doing business or somebody's in an office and uh, you know somebody comes and he wants to grease you, he wants to grease me. Huh? He wants to, you know, he wants to use some little grease. He wants to, to bring some, some enlargement that, uh, uh, it is more than that. It is more than what they are asking. It, there is a demon behind it. It is called the demon, the spirit of defilement. The enemy wants to bring defilement on your, in your office, but you need to stand out like Daniel, like Chandra, Meshach, and Abednego. We need to stand up and say, no, to all manner of defilement. We refuse to be defiled in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Refuse to be defiled. Refuse to be defiled. Now, what else? I want to go to the book of Zephaniah. The book of Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter, uh, Zephaniah chapter three, chapter three, uh, and I will read, uh, uh, allow me to read uh, verse nine. Zephaniah chapter three, verse nine. The Bible says, for then I will restore to the people a pure language, a pure language. I want to bring point number two. I've already talked about defilement. Uh, uh, defilement will make, will, will cause us, will cause us not to move in the wisdom and the understanding. It's going to cause us not to be 10 times better than the astrologers and the witches and the sorcerers. The other thing that will, will make us not to, not to, 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 to access this wisdom and to access this kind of knowledge is called division. 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 When we choose not to, not to, to walk or to work as one, Zephaniah chapter three, verse nine says, for then I will restore to the people a pure language, a pure language that they all may call on, on the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord, to serve him with one accord. You understand? Uh, when Daniel uh, went to his, his, his colleagues, he went and he told them uh, that we need, there is a prayer, there is something, there is a life, there is a lifestyle we need to live here. We cannot just be like anybody else around. And you know what? It, it, it required, it took the, the when, when he incorporated them, they walked as a team. They moved in as a team. They didn't say, oh, Daniel, you see, it is you who knows. We don't know why we should not eat the, the, the foods, the delicacies and we are in captivity here. I mean, we have left our people. We are not free here. Who are you to tell us not to eat? No, they adopted the spirit of one accord. We must bring agreement in our prayer, in our prayer meetings. We must move as one. If when, when we agree that we have to, to, to pray over a certain matter, we must bring agreement, not just a verbal agreement, but we agree in our spirits. Because the Bible says, whatever two or three shall lose here or not, shall be loose in heaven. Whatever we shall bind here or not, shall be bound in heaven. But men and brethren, why are we binding so many things and they don't seem to be bound? Why are we losing so many things and some seems to be refusing to be loose is because there is no spirit of oneness. We must come to a place of oneness. We must come to a place of agreement. If we agree, we are praying and it must rain before the end of the day. After that prayer meeting, we are all going to buy umbrellas. Why? We are believing. We are believing on what we are praying. We must bring 
faith. We must be of one accord. We must agree in the spirit. But when we are, there is a group here believing that it is going to be done. Another group is here, is, is like asking, have you ever seen something like this before? They are asking that in their hearts. Yeah. They, in their mouth, they are saying, yes, 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 yes. In the name of Jesus, we bind. In the name of Jesus, we bind. In their hearts, they are asking, what, are, what is this that we are binding? We must bring, we must be of one accord. We must be of one accord. Our language must be pure. Our language must be pure. We should not speak from different, the, the two sides of the mouth. No, when we say it is done, we need to believe it is done. You know what? I read a scripture somewhere, Pastor Newton. Let me see whether I can get a scripture. My good God, help me. In the book of Job, where did I read this? Holy Spirit, help me. I read a scripture somewhere. Oh, my good God, yes. In the book of Job, I read a scripture in the book of Job, chapter 38, chapter 38. Uh, I read a scripture in the book of Job, chapter 38, and, uh, and, uh, and verse 1 and 2, but more so verse 2. Then the Lord answered Job out of the will wind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? The Holy Spirit is speaking. You remember the knowledge? The knowledge we are following in the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 20? I'm still on that knowledge. On that knowledge. The Bible says, who is this who darkens counsel? When we get into prayer and we are not in one accord, we are not in agreement, then when this one is speaking this, the other one is speaking the other, we are darkening the counsel of the Lord. How? By the words without knowledge. How do we acquire this knowledge? We acquire this knowledge by, by making sure that we are fed with the word of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I was talking about walking as one, talking with one voice, moving with one accord, understanding that these four Hebrew boys, these four Hebrew boys, they had to move as a team. They had to agree that we are going this journey together, not, not bringing, a, not darkening the counsel of God, not darkening the counsel of God. We must be keen and careful that there will be no defilement in our lives and in our midst, and that we will be one. We will be one in the name of Jesus, that our language will be one. I want to read a scripture here so that we may understand what I mean by our languages being one. I read a scripture in the book of Nehemiah, in the book of Nehemiah, in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, this is what the Bible says in the book of Nehemiah. I'm explaining this thing of, of one language, of one mouth, of lang one language. One accord, one accord. And when you read in the book of Nehemiah chapter 13, Nehemiah chapter 13, the uh, verses 23, Nehemiah 13, 23, the Bible says, in those days, I also saw Jews who had married women of Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. Now watch this, verse, verse 34, verse, no, 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 verse 24. Verse 24, the Bible says, and half of the children spoke the language of Ashdod and could not speak the language of Judah, but spoke according to the language of one or the other people. Oh, may God deliver us from this. May God deliver the church from this kind of a spirit. The Bible says that uh, there were found a generation, a people who had no language, they had no language. They, were, they couldn't walk together. Why? They had different language. They, they were not Estonians. 
They couldn't speak only in Ashdod. They had a mixed language. They are not Ashdod's and they are not Jews. May God deliver us from this. There is something that happens when there is oneness in uh, there is oneness among us. Oneness, that kind of oneness brings a kind of a wisdom and understanding. There are things that happen when we choose to move as a group, as one. Watch this, what the Bible says in the book of Genesis. This is a scripture that we, we, we all know. What does the Bible say? The Bible talks about uh, uh, this evil man, this bad man, this man who wants to build something, a tower to go and, uh, and either greet God or be with God. I don't know what he was he wanted in the book of Genesis chapter 11. And you know what? The Bible says, uh, they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had, uh, and, uh, and, and the Bible, and verse 4 says, and they say, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower. And when you continue reading verse 5, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they have, they have one language. There is a wisdom and an understanding that comes when we are one and when we have one language, even in prayer. When it comes to agreement, you need to look for a man or for a woman who is in agreement, who is in agreement with you in what you are saying or what you are praying for. Let me give you an example, a personal, a very personal example. Some years ago, uh, we wanted to buy a, a car. We wanted to buy a vehicle. And I, I had this choice. I wanted to, be, to buy a, a certain make of a car. And little did I know that my wife also wanted a, a different make or a different type. So I, I go home this one day and I tell my wife, eh, uh, I want, I'm believing God that, uh, that we, we buy or God blesses us with this kind of a car. And my wife says, uh, no, 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 no. Me, I have, I have been believing God to get this kind of a car. And I knew there is a problem now. One year, two years, almost two and a half years down the line, the vehicle wasn't coming. So I acted as a wise man and as a man of God. And because these things were to happen by faith is a personal testimony. So I went and I, uh, I sent one of my sons and I told him to go, and, and, uh, to go in a cyber and print for me uh, a very different, uh, different uh, uh, kind of a, of a vehicle. And uh, he went and he printed. So I went home and I was, I was, I was like, I didn't want it, the, the, the printout to be seen. So I walked in the house and I say, this is a car that God is going to give us. And I said, let nobody say no, nothing. <laughs> you see what? Then I hanged it. I hanged it somewhere uh, next to, to the television set. And every day, every day, I, everybody, when we are watching news, everybody is seeing the car. You know what? Within months, somebody bought that car from Japan for me and uh, brought it all the way to Kenya. And they called me while the car was here. Why? At that point, we were moving. We were one, me and my wife. Now we were one. Otherwise, we could have waited for 20 years. And we think that there are no cars. We think that God is not working miracles. But when the angels are being released to bring cars, we are not in agreement. I am here to tell you, it may be, it may not be that God has not heard your prayer, but maybe you have not gotten to a place of agreement. 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 Are you agreeing? Are you agreeing? 
green because you may be praying with somebody and then they are believing for this. You, you are believing for this, but you are praying in the same chamber and you're all saying amen. You must, we must come to a place as a church, as brethren, as a people, as a ministry, as friends, and agree which direction are we going. Daniel, Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I want to understand, they agreed, we are not going to eat. Can you imagine if they agreed? Huh? Like Pastor Lucy can remember this, if she's still watching, following. Huh? We went in a mission somewhere in Kenya, that, that is early 1990, uh, you know, 1990s, early, you know, 1994, 1995. And we had this big group of young people, you know, and we were fasting. But a few chose to go and eat some chapatis. Yeah? They chose to go and hide and eat. And there was problem. Why? <laughs> because somebody had broken the fast. Thank God. When they came to the prayer chamber, the moment they ended, somebody started prophesying and saying, the Lord is saying, so and so and so, they have already eaten. Oh my good God, don't get scared. I will not see, I will not tell you that uh, you may have eaten and we are fasting for 21 days, man. Hallelujah, glory to God. I, I mean, we, we, must, we must be this serious. We must come to a place of agreement. We must come to a place where we are not betraying one another. We must come to a place if we agree, we are going to pray for 21 days, we are praying for 21 days. When if we agree, we are praying holy morning, we are praying holy morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that we catch the spirit of oneness. I pray for oneness today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be oneness in that house. Let there be oneness in that business. Let there be oneness in whatever you are believing God for. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, I pray that you will start to agree now in Jesus' mighty name. Because you know what? Because many times for lack of agreement, for lack of agreement, we are where we are. Sometimes you stand before the church as a pastor, as a man of God. I have been a pastor for quite some while now. And you say, this is the direction we are going. But there are 10 people there who are consulting. They are saying, hey, how possible is that? <laughs> ah, this is too difficult. This is too hard. Have you thought about it? Uh, things are hard. The times are difficult. We are just out of COVID. No, 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 no. We are not out of COVID. We are not in COVID in first place. We have always been in Christ. When did we get out of Christ to get into COVID? Anyway, now, what I'm saying is, we need to come to the place of agreement. As a people, we come to a place of agreement that this is the way we are going. If you have been praying with your brother or your sister, or even your spouse, haven't you given, haven't, haven't I given you a testimony about my, myself? Check whether you have been agreed. How comes that you have prayed of a matter for two years, for three years, nothing is working? Please, I, I, would, I would suggest Meet with this person you have been praying together. And, you know, be honest with one another. Are we agreeing? Have we been agreeing? Because unless, who is lying to who? If Jesus said, whatever two or three shall bind there or not, shall be bound in heaven, then how comes my brother? There is this thing we are bound for the last five years, but it seems to be loose. Who is losing it? Could it be like we meet we bind during the day and you go to, to lose during the night. Or we lose during the day and you go to bind during the night. Because why is it not being bound? Why is it not being loosed? Who is enjoying who here? Who is not serious about it? Because God is serious. God said, whatever we shall agree, and this is why you are seeing power in the life of Daniel, Shendrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? They agreed. They agreed. We are not going to eat. Even if we perish, we perish. You see the same thing. When they were threatened with fire, 
fire. They were threatened with fire. Hey, they told the king, Mr. King, sir, live for long, live, live, live forever. But we are not going, we are not going to, we are not going to succumb. We are not going to succumb. We are not going to, we are not going to eat. We are not going to, to get into your things, Mr. King. We are not going to, we are not going to, to do these things. We disagree. We are not going to defy us. We are not going to bow. We are not going to bow. But they did it. They agreed as a group. Can you imagine if one was saying, I'm not going to bow. Then other two are saying, there is no problem. We can, we can just bow, but in our hearts, we are not, we are not, uh, we are not bowing. There is, a, uh, there is a story in Africa. There is a story told in Africa. In Africa. The only stories that are told in Africa. About this father who told his son to sit down. And the, the son said, the son refused. So he said, so and so. I say, sit down. And the son refused. And the third time the father said, so and so. I have said, sit down. Then the young man went sat down and he said, Father, although I am seated, the heart is standing. That's the problem of many brethren. You find that as much as they are saying this, the heart means the other. And this way, we will not access this kind of wisdom and knowledge. Unless we become one brethren, we are not going to beat them. If we are going to beat them, there must be oneness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I want to pray. Shakadusha, Malasto Kazuka. Lord, I ask and I pray, let there be oneness. I call for oneness in, within the body of Christ. I call for oneness in the name of Jesus. I call for unity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Let the powers that divide us, let them be broken today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the forces of darkness that are sent to divide us, let them be defeated now. Let them be crushed now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Let all the witchcraft that has been exercised, that has been thrown to divide us, to keep us defiled. I pray again at this spirit, the spirit there is no defilement, there is praise no divisions in the mighty name of the Lord. And Lord, I pray that there will be oneness. I pray for oneness. I pray for oneness that we will be like one man in the name of Jesus. Is even as we walk into our victory. Even as we walk into our victory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to shake ourselves from this kind of dust. And we need to arise and shine because our light has come. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If there has been defilement in your life, let the Lord deal with it because you must see the glory of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have been compromised in any way, may the Lord deal with it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the Lord pardon us, may the Lord purge us, may the Lord cleanse us, may the Lord wash us, may the Lord pour his grace, his power upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the Lord make us one. May the Lord make us one. You know what? I know even as we agree, uh, even as we agree, we are going to see miracles, signs and wonders. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I want to agree with somebody. I want, I always, after preaching and teaching, I, I exercise what I teach and I exercise what I preach. Uh, maybe you have been looking for somebody to agree with and all the people you have been agreeing with, they have not been agreeing per se. They are just giving you lip service. Uh, uh, but I want to genuinely agree with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to take a piece of paper. Take one, a piece of paper. If if you can access that. And I want you to write three things. Write three things down. Things that they have looked as though they are impossible. If before the eyes of men, those things are, are, are like impossible. 
they are like impossible. I know you may be saying, Apostle, I have been praying for them over 10 years. I don't care. Just write three, three matters, three things. Don't throw the paper. Just write one, this, two, this, three, this. Doesn't matter how difficult it has been. But I am telling you the truth. If I be a man of God, indeed I am. As I pray this night in the name of Jesus, that the Lord is going to get in and is going to intervene. And what has looked to be impossible is going to be a possibility right now to the glory of God. Kapula Zagada, hey Shadika, Zogadia, by faith, I lay my hands on those things that you have, you have written. By faith, I lay my hands on that piece of paper. By faith, I lay my hands on that piece of paper. Kaya Zaga Zaga, Kula Mazaga Zaga, Kula Z, Zalia Zaga, Kaya Zaya, let's agree, let's agree, let's agree. Even the man of God, Pastor Newton is agreeing with you. We are agreeing. We are, we are agreeing. A, 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 a robe of three places is not easy to break. We are agreeing now. We are agreeing now for those three things that you have written down. Kapule Zagaya. Hey, Sheketeke. Zagai Zaga. Kules to les to les. Mashadi Gazega. Rakla Sona. I dispatch angels. I dispatch angels. I dispatch angels, Kasoke Zeka, for there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Masuli Sale, Karaka Dagada, Kareka Degado, whatever has refused to move is moving now. Mashotaya, Rikaya, no more delays, no more delays. Makaya, there is somebody listening to me. You have been experiencing delays since your childhood. It's not that things don't happen in your life. But there seems to be a pattern of things happening, but happening very late. Things are happening, yes, but they happen. They take a while. They take a long time before they happen. I hear the Lord tell me to tell you that that is broken now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, there will be no more delays in your life from now. Starting with the three things you have written, there will be no delay, no more delay, no more delay, no more delay. I say by the Spirit of the Lord, I break the power. Ah, Shadaga, who's again? Hey, Shadia, you spirit of delay, you spirit of delay, you spirit of delay. Live now in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. Masoko Toko, Masoto Koto, Masagada, I release grace. I release grace, I release grace, I release grace, I release grace, I release grace. I release grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. I release grace, I release grace, I release grace upon each one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare miracles, signs, and wonders. If you are sick, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Masha Talibaga. Be healed right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Let the Lord my God meet your knees. Let your knees be met by the Lord my God. Let the Lord my God meet your knees. In the mighty name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. The three things. You have written down, I sign in the spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they are done to the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you.